Our missions committee is collecting funds for our annual holiday outreach to those in need. Please mail a check to the church or use our online giving page on our website to make a donation to this year's effort. Due to a lovely grant from a local foundation, your donations right now are matched and through the 31st of December with gift cards from local restaurants to make the holidays even nicer for those we serve and to help support local businesses. Our annual Women's Day will be held on Saturday, January 9th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. This year will be an online experience, so it's the perfect time for you to invite your friends who doesn't live close enough to attend in person. This year's theme is Are You Game? And you can register at bayportumc.org slash Women's Day 2021. Lay servants are equipped disciples of Jesus who are equipped to minister through preaching, teaching, and other ministries. Visit liedistrict.com slash ministries for more information on this year's course offerings or to register. This Advent Christmas season, we have some beautiful opportunities for you to worship with us. This is the perfect time to rejoice in Jesus Christ. Perhaps this year you'll also make that commitment or recommitment to Christ that you've been meaning to make. This morning, our Sunday school will be unveiling their pre-recorded Christmas pageant. I think you'll enjoy what they've been working on with their own unique telling of the Christmas story. And then on Christmas Eve, we will have our family services, a family service at 5, and then our lessons and carol service at 10 p.m. Due to a lack of volunteers, both services, however, will be held online only. Are you ready to kiss 2020 goodbye? <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> As a special treat this year, our worship committee and I have decided to offer an opportunity on New Year's Eve to put the past behind us and to recommit ourselves to Christ for the year 2021. This was a tradition of the early Methodist and a powerful movement for those seeking to renew their covenant with God. And don't worry, we'll still wrap up in plenty of time to watch the ball drop. So we hope you'll join us for our Wesley, Wesleyan Covenant service online at 10 p.m. on December 31st. You want to check our e-newsletter for more because I know that you won't want to miss what it is that God is doing. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and check on social media that you're here today and then silence your cell phones. And now, church, are you ready to worship? Amen. Amen. The great light, prophesied by Isaiah in today's text, is echoed in the first strains of John's Gospel's good news, the light that brings peace, that saves the people from all that would extinguish it, has been there from the beginning. The word is made flesh and dwells among us. This reign is now. Will we believe it? Will we continue to put flesh on it, embodying the peace meant for all humanity?
Call to worship. Light one candle for love. Because the world is broken and the wait is long, but love never ends. Love faithfully goes about the work of, uh, of casting out fear, speaking truth, healing the deepest wounds, crossing the divide from this world to the next and back again. Here I am, she whispers, this, uh, the servant of the Lord. So we light one candle, because it only takes one, Christ with us. Please uh, join me in the opening prayer. Holy One, we thank you for, for the glimp glimpses we get of your peace on earth. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we are, aren't sure that go, goodwill is among us, can, uh, can be found. Ignite the flame of peace within us. I'm sorry, uh, ignite the flame with, within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. That we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Help us face the pain of life and embrace the assurance that light is already here and always coming. Amen. Amen. This is a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy, for they rejoice with you as at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders and the rod of their oppressor <coughs> you have broken in the day of Midian. For all the boots of tramping warriors, all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned for the fire. For a child has been born with us a son who is given to us. Excuse me, I'm sorry. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The authority will grow continually. His authority will grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it and withhold it with justice and, and with righteousness from this time onward and, and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now as we begin to pass the peace of Jesus Christ around the room with each other and around with us online, take a look around the room, look at all the pictures that you see online, make eye contact with at least three people right now. See and be seen by one another as we begin to extend the peace of Christ to each other. Peace of Christ be with you. I see you. And would you share these words with me? May the grace of God help us to forgive one another. May the love of the Lord make us one. And may the peace of Christ be with us through the love of Jesus. Amen.
Good morning. Well, we are certainly smack in the middle of gift giving season, aren't we? I can see I'm going to have to start my uh, shopping one of these days, maybe tomorrow. You know, when my sisters and I were children, most of our Christmas gifts, obviously, were from Santa Claus. But we also each got a gift from my parents. Now, this gift was usually put under the tree a day or two before Christmas. So when mom and dad weren't around, we would try to sneak a peek at our gifts. We would pick them up to see how heavy they were. We would shake them to see if anything rattled. This one is rattling. We would even try to lift up the edges of the wrapping paper to, to see what we could see. It's hard to wait a couple of days to open a gift, especially when you're a child. Well, I want to tell you a story this morning about a Christmas present that wasn't fully opened for about 33 years. One time, God asked a teenage girl named Mary to help him give a gift to the whole world. Mary said yes, and so one night in Bethlehem, the gift was delivered. Now, who was that gift? The baby Jesus, of course. So Mary took strips of cloth and she wrapped the gift up nice and snug. And she spent the next years taking very good care of God's gift to the world. And just like me peeking at my gifts when I was a child, there were many people who did get a peek at God's gift. The disciples did when Jesus calmed a storm that was about to sink their boat. A blind man did when Jesus restored his sight. Jarius certainly did when Jesus brought his little daughter back to life. A crippled man did when Jesus healed him. But then Jesus died on the cross and was buried in a tomb, maybe something like a cave, with a large stone blocking the entrance so nobody could steal God's gift to the world. A couple of days later, some friends went to visit the tomb, and they saw that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was open. And then two other friends looked inside and they saw that the gift had finally been unwrapped. The only thing left was just the strips of cloth that the gift had been wrapped in. God's gift to the whole world, the very first Christmas present ever, was born in Bethlehem and the world waited 33 years for it to be unwrapped. During those years, People got peaks of the hope and the peace and the joy and the love that God's gift would bring. So you know that new toy or video game that you want for Christmas? You know that the more time you spend with it, the more you learn about it. Well, the more time you spend with Jesus, the more you learn about him too. Merry Christmas, everyone. Love to you all. That's all I got. <laughs>
Please stand as you are able for a reading from uh, the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light that shines in the darkness, and the, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was, a man sent, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came, he, came to, he came to what was his own, and his people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood or, the, or of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and the flesh dwelled among us, 
And, and as we have seen, the glory, the glory of, of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this is he of whom I has, have said, he who comes for me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has never ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the, close to the Father's heart and has made him known. The gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. So on this particular Sunday, every year, our children will gather together out in the hallways, down in the education wing, and there will be a hustle and a bustle as they put on their costumes and prepare to don their halos for yet another Christmas pageant. This year, our Christmas pageant has been prepared and pre-recorded so that the hustle and bustle that normally goes on outside those doors is missing this morning. Although we may still get a visit from Santa and the fire truck sometime this morning as well, so you may hear that too. However, the children have prepared our pageant to tell us the story of Christmas, to remind us all of our Savior's love that came to us. And I have to tell you, church, that as I look and listen to our children as they speak the lines and read them themselves, I feel like perhaps this might even be our best pageant yet. So I'll leave the decision up to you. But I hope that you'll see that there is some real beauty in the story that the children tell us, a, a story that goes beyond the beauty of the children themselves and points us towards our Savior's love and care for all of us. Merry Christmas, church. Welcome to the Bayport United Methodist Church 2020 Christmas Pageant when Christmas comes for everyone. All this year, in the days leading up to Christmas, people gathered in many places. Celebrations with friends, parties at work, Christmas concerts, family dinner tables, and special services at church. This year, many of us will be mailing presents and celebrating online. Before this year, many people spent their time at shops and malls looking for that perfect gift. This year, many of us will be shopping online. People will still, be, will still gather at shelters and hospitals. But some will not gather at all, finding themselves quite alone in a season that somehow doesn't seem to involve them. What is it all about? What are these seasons of Advent and Christmas for? And who are they for? They are for everyone, for all the world. Is to prepare? To dream. To hope. To wait. For the child the whole world is longing for. Emmanuel. God is with us, all of us.
Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All the people had to travel to the hometowns of their ancestors to be counted. Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem, David's town, because Joseph was a descendant of King David. Mary was about to have a baby. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them to stay in the inn. Right at the center of our Christmas is the child Jesus. He is the reason we gather in this season. A child is born. A light has come to the glow of the world. A hope. A warmth. Telling us that God is with us. That, that is what Emmanuel means. Jesus has got the word of hope to the world. Telling people in darkness there is light. Telling those who are sad there is joy. Telling those who are lonely, there is someone who cares. Telling those who fight, there is peace. On the night Jesus was born, shepherds were camping in the hills outside of Bethlehem. Some were watching over the sheep. Suddenly God's angels stood among them and God's glory blazed around them. The shepherds were terrified, but the angel said, Don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everyone or everywhere. A savior has been born in David's town tonight. And at once the angel was joined by a huge choir of angels singing God's praises and proclaiming God's peace. After the angels had gone away, the shepherds talked it over with each other. Let's go to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. So the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem to find the baby. The first people to visit baby Jesus were shepherds. Most people looked down on shepherds. They didn't have friends. Many people didn't trust them. Some thought they were thieves. As we celebrate, let's remember Jesus was not born just for the people we like or for those who are rich or well dressed. Jesus came for everyone. He came for those who are poor. For those who feel alone. For those who are unloved. Jesus was born to remind us that there is room in God's heart for everyone. Let us remember the people for whom the Savior comes. Let us pray. 
God of the whole world, help us this Christmas to remember all your people. As we buy presents, help us remember to give those who have none. As we celebrate with friends, help us remember to visit <laughs> who are lo- those who are lonely. As we eat our fill of food, help us remember to share with those who have no food to eat. And if we have had a falling out with others, help us this Christmas to make up with them. If we dislike others, help us to learn like them again. If we have ignored people, help us to speak to them again. Help us help us to learn from the shepherds who gathered round at you at your birth. You were born for everyone. Amen. 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 Congratulations to all of our teachers and uh, Sunday school superintendents and especially all of the children and our gratitude to all of you kids for making it possible for us to experience the Christmas story in this very unique way this year. It was such a pleasure to hear them playing and speaking uh, and wearing their costumes and reminding us all of the way the shepherds gathered, the way the angels sang, and the way that the baby Jesus was born into this world in the lowliest of beginnings, but with the highest for the highest king of kings. I invite you now to get into a comfortable position of rest. I invite you to get as quiet and as still as you can. And I invite you to take a deep breath and assume a listening posture. Perhaps with your eyes closed or fixed on the candle on our screens as we prepare for a time of prayer. For those who'd like to share their prayers online, you may go ahead and do so at this time. loving and everlasting God. We thank you today, Lord, for all that you've given to us, for the the love that you show us each and every day, especially, Lord, on this special Sunday of Advent in which we celebrate love. We ask you, Jesus, to remind us of your great love for us, even as we share the love we have with one another. 
Oh God, we lift up these prayers to you today in sure and certain hope that you are listening, trusting in the power of your resurrection and encouraged by the sufficient grace you give us. Lord, we pray today for John Morrell, who will be by himself this Christmas, for help with food and perhaps even some presents. Loving God, hear our prayer. For Anna Hans, whose prayer is to see her grandkids this year. Loving God, hear our prayer. Some prayers for, from Donna Pace for healing from COVID for Dave and Jackie. Dave is in the hospital on a ventilator. Jackie is two months pregnant and at home with her young daughter. Prayers of healing from COVID for Pam and Kevin. Prayers of healing for uh, Rick Theot, who was hospitalized with COVID and double pneumonia. Prayers of thanksgiving for Jimmy, who had a successful heart procedure this past week and didn't need to get a stent. Prayers for clarity of thought when taking down his psychology final. And prayers of thanksgiving that when done, the semester will finally be over. Hallelujah. <laughs> prayers for all who will be separated from friends and family this Christmas that they may keep the light of Christmas in their hearts to dispel any darkness. Loving God, hear our prayer. Oh God, we pray for all of those on our prayer list. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for Paul Gorin, Anna Hans, Barbara Carbonaro, Joseph Seisel, Kathy Oakes, Vinnie Rosa, Lisa Tenzik, Betty Galanti, Jane Mahoney, Roy Mahoney, John and Cindy Rocco, John Marill, Reardan, Linda Hobbs, Jason Johnson, Jean Seal, and Frank Kappa. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray that the Lord would save us all from the coronavirus and heal those already afflicted around the world. And we praise the Lord for those who have already recovered and come home to, you, to us. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for our healthcare workers, our first responders, and other workers deemed essential right now, that the Lord would protect their health and give them strength. May God continue to bless them and their families. Loving God, hear our prayer. We ask for daily provision for all of those in need, especially during this holiday season. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray against the death of anyone based upon the tone of their skin, for those working for racial equality, that they might increase in awareness and inclusiveness, and for an end to the violence between God's children. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all those remembering Lucille Korf and Gloria McCullough, June Garbin, Matt Clancy, June Wirtz, Reverend Landon Owen, Fritz Schaefer, Salvatore, Dorothy Stahiros, Jonathan Noble, Betty Lindquist, Frank Mezakevich, and anyone else who may be mourning with us this morning. Loving God, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray against gun violence and healing for those suffering from mental illness or addictions of any sort, and opioid addictions in particular. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray against, uh, oh, excuse me, we pray for the survivors of hurricanes, for the restoration of their homes, and for the families of those who've lost loved ones to natural disasters like these. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for the United Methodist Church in its global struggle for unity, justice, and understanding. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray a prayer of thanksgiving for the children of our church and thanksgiving for the stories that they tell and the reminder that God's love is to the greatest and the least of these. Loving God, hear our prayer. Continued prayers for Lisa Tenzik. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those dealing with anxiety and depression, prayers for those who are lonely. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers of healing and thanksgiving as Chris Edwards' daughter-in-law will complete her radiation therapy this week before Christmas. Loving God, hear our prayer. Healing for Suzanne McCoy's family, for restoration, love, and forgiveness for one another. 
loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers for Nikki, a mom who's having a difficult pregnancy. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers of healing for the broken heart of Suzanne's friend, Andrea, who's alone this holiday. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers for Nancy Covino, who's in the hospital suffering from COPD. Loving God, hear our prayer. A prayer of gratitude that our former pastor, Fred Meck, can worship with us this morning. Thank you, God, for his ministry among us and for his presence here today. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers of thanksgiving for technology, which allows us to be together online for Christmas. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers for Guy's wife, Betty, that she may feel the warmth and love of the Lord and not feel alone this Christmas. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers for, uh, for Cindy Florence Principal's brother, who has COVID and has to go on a ventilator this weekend. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers for those separated from their families during this Christmas season. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers for Cindy Florence's friend, Barbara. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers for Anna, let her also feel the love of the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. Continued prayers of healing for Marge Earl. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those who have been designated non-essential by government that they know their worth in Jesus Christ. Loving God, hear our prayer. For Linda, Mance, for Linda Mazakevich, who's, um, who's mourning her husband this day, Lord, that you would bring her comfort and peace. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers of healing for Arena Halstead. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers of healing for George, Kathy's brother, who's been in the hospital for three weeks now, suffering from an extreme case of ulcerative colitis. For Vinny's sister, Maria, who's in rehab after several small strokes. Prayers for John and Cindy Rocco, Laura Hegner. Prayers for the world, for peace, for forgiveness, for health, for an end to COVID-19, and that 2021 will be a welcome change for all. Loving God, hear our prayer. Prayers for the safety of our children and grandchildren in the uh, Bruce and Kathy Oaks' children and grandchildren in Binghamton. Keeping them safe with the snow and for more bad weather to come, Lord God, we pray that you keep them all safe there. Loving God, hear our prayer. Lord, you know the prayers of our hearts and whether we speak them aloud to you or offer them to you in the whispers of the heart. We thank you, Lord, for your never-ending love and that your children are always welcome by your side. Thank you for hearing our prayers and acting in the good of all your children. So, Lord, it is with the confidence of those who are loved by you and who love you in return that we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Usher, come forward. As we offer of ourselves and our gifts this morning, we are privileged to be able to give here in person by mailing a check to our church office or by going to bayportumc.org slash online dash giving. As we offer our prayers, our gifts, our talents before God this morning, let us come to the Lord in prayer.
Oh God, we ask your special blessing upon these gifts and upon those who give them. We ask, oh God, that they would be used in the service of your kingdom, that they would become ambassadors of your love, tokens, Lord God, of your peace, reminders, Lord Jesus, that your grace is all sufficient. We ask, Lord God, that you would use these to make our world a better place, that we might see your kingdom coming, and that we might feel, Lord God, the grace of Jesus Christ extending out through us. Lord, we ask your blessing then upon these gifts and we offer you praise and thanksgiving from the very bottom of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. those of you worshiping from home this morning, I invite you now to pick up your candle and hold it high for the benediction. In this season of waiting, know this. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news, that the light has dawned and shines on all people. Fill the night left by sadness with messages of peace. Go into your lives, humming the tunes that keep that peace alive in you and that spur you on in your work for justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat now after me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen. Before we move, I'd like to offer one more gift on the part of our Sunday school. Welcome to the... Pure pandemonium tonight out here in the fields outside Bethlehem. It seems that the shepherds have left their sheep out there in the fields to go and find the Christ child in a manger. Meanwhile, the sheep are out here. Well, let's take a look. Ba, 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 I'm cheap. Ba, 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 I'm cheap. 
Sheep noise, sheep noise, sheep noise. I'm a sheep. Blah. That's all from the fields outside Bethlehem. Back to you all in the studio. Sheep noise, sheep noise, sheep noise. I'm a sheep. And with that, let's have a postlude. <laughs> <laughs>